sir. What you cooking? Same thing I've been cooking the past 15 years with the hope of poisoning you. Ain't working so well. <laughs> Not yet. I'll be honest, though. Tastes bad enough to kill a man. I never was much of a cook, but I did try to be a good wife. And you have been. <laughs> Given what we was and what we came from, I think we've gone and done OK. I look at Jack. I look at him, and I think we've been blessed. Maybe he can be something more. He's a good kid. He can be whatever he wants to be. He ain't going to be no frontier gunslinger killing and running those gang, though. <laughs> That way's over. Railroads and government and motor cars and everything gone and done away with all that. And he ain't gonna marry no orphaned working girl running with a bunch of hucksters, neither. If he meets one like you, I hope he'll marry her. <laughs> Stop. For an illiterate gunslinger, you sure know how to make a girl blush. <laughs> God damn, Crows! John! You have got to go deal with them? They've broken into the silo again and are eating all the corn out from it. Of course, my angel. Wait, get out of there. All right, all right. Go on. Scat. Shh. Get up, old man. I, I am up. Get up! Oh. Oh. There, I'm up. Well, thank the good Lord you're back. Nothing worse for an old man than sleeping in the warm afternoon sun. You want a long sleep, Uncle? That can be arranged. It'll cost me less than food. You always was a hard, nasty man, John Marston. You always was a useless, conniving thief. And where's them cattle? Did you take them to pasture? It's coming around to that. When, exactly? It's easy to pick on the elderly. It's easy, but it ain't dignified. Come on, old man. We'll do this together.
Let's move them out. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. There you go. Let's keep them moving now. Whoa there. Come on. again. Come on, let's go. Keep it moving. After the herd, I'll ride back. No thanks. You got your pound of flesh from me today. Get up.
What are you looking at, old man? There's some Mustangs and some such out there beyond that ridge. Wondering if it was worth getting you and going around some of them up. Fair enough. We're nearly out of money. Ranch is in turmoil. We may not make it through the winter. What could we possibly want with some good quality horses? Come on. That tone of voice ain't so becoming on you. Makes you seem all pent up and angry like some black water would be business tycoon with a bad case of hemorrhoids. I'll give you a bad case of someone just shot me in the head if you don't hurry up. Are you gonna man up, kid? Come on, follow me. Why you gotta act so diggity all the damn time? What happened to what you? What were you gonna do? Just look at them horses all day? Well, God forbid I'd do anything around here without checking with His Royal Highness first. Yeah, you're real good at watching. That's about all you're good for, apart from bending your elbow. I can't do right for doing wrong. You're an ungrateful bastard, you know. I did my best when you was gone. Your best is like anybody else's worst. Come on. I'm getting old. I gotta start taking things easy. You've been taking things easy for 40 years. Whoa. I see him. Come on. Let's go.
Mess around and get back on your horse. Might as well see Come if you can get us another one. There you go! 
Whoa, there. I think that's enough for now. Let's get him back to the ranch. That weren't half bad for a couple of old reprobates. I learned a few things while I was away. Anything you wanted to know, you only had to ask me. You? What the hell do you know about any of this? I was a rancher myself back in the day. Firstly, I don't believe you. And secondly, if you was, why have you been hiding it all these years? You act like I never do anything. I do plenty. You're asleep half the day. And the other half, you're so drunk you couldn't hit the ground with your hat in three throws. I taught you a few things, John Marston. Like how to steal beer when... Make sure there's enough fresh hay. We need to keep them strong. All right. Damn, a little gratitude wouldn't kill you. Not a bad day's work. Howdy, gone. Come on. John, we got a telegram from some lady friend of yours, a Bonnie something or other. Something you ain't telling me? Bonnie McFarlane. She's a friend. Mm. Saved my life when I went after Bill and nearly got myself killed again. Oh, and now you two's in the habit of sending each other letters. How very nice. It weren't nothing like that. What's it say? I don't know. I can't. Well, you know I can't read. Give it here. You read that thing out loud. I ain't hiding nothing. Dear Mr. Marston, stop. Need corn sacks, stop. Emergency, stop. Weevils and moths ate entire county supply, stop. Can you help? Not exactly the most romantic request now, is it? I guess not. And she saved your life, you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, then you're gonna have to help her and her family out. We've got a plentiful supply of corn sacks over near the silo. Oh, about the one thing Uncle didn't manage to have stolen while we was gone. Okay. Hurry back, John. 
And John, what's she like? Well, uh, you know, a little bit like you, I guess. She's a woman in a man's world. Maybe I should meet this McFarlane woman. Well, come on then. Let's get going. I don't think I can let you go off again without me. Fair enough. I'm glad of the company. You only had to ask. Ask? I was waiting for you to ask me. I thought you'd want to keep an eye on the boy. Oh, while you were off supporting with cowgirls in the next county? I don't think so, John Marston. You only just got home. That Jack has seen enough of me for a lifetime. Are you sure this is the right way? So, is she married to Spawny McFarland? No. What does she look like? I don't know. Pretty normal, I suppose. Normal? What? Normal like me? No. Normal as in two eyes, mouth, nose, that kind of normal. Besides, ain't no woman fine as you. A little flattery. Now we're finally getting somewhere. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. Another pearl of wisdom for John Marston. I sure do miss those. I never took you for the jealous type, Abigail. I ain't jealous so much as curious. You heard what she wrote. It's just some corn. Why are you stopping? She saved my life, and she was decent enough to me, so I owe her this much at least. Oh. How did she save her life, anyway? She found me half dead on the side of the road and took me to the doctor. Most folks would have left me there. Half dead from what? Bill didn't take so kindly to me visiting on it now. Bill never did like surprises. How was he? Same as he was when we left. Angry and dumb. Taking his revenge out on the road. People down there were really scared of him. Of Bill? You gotta be kidding me. He was only frightening if he was afraid of dumb fools. Bill weren't so bad, but when Dutch went crazy, Bill took it hard. For a while, we all thought we'd found something right. A better way to live, but it was just a lie. So you saw before they did. Maybe, but they was still kind of a family. A family that left you for dead. You knew the truth, John, and they hated you for it. Where did they take you? Who? Those government bastards. Where did they hold you and Jack? I ain't sure. They kept their eyes covered there and back. Can't have been too far from here, though. They treat you right? It ain't the first time I've had a gun to my head, John. You're forgetting your marriage proposal. Very fun. No, they learned pretty quick what would happen if they laid a finger on me. Sons of bitches. It wasn't them or being there. I didn't care about that. I've been in far worse situations. It was the wait. I didn't know if you was coming back. Of course I was coming back. You were only supposed to be gone for a couple of days. It took longer than I thought. Crack that whip, John, or we'll never get there. The only thing Bill and Dutch was ever any good at was not getting caught. I started thinking you'd gone back to them. That life's over. I hope you're right. Bill, Javier, Dutch, they're all dead. You don't get more over than that. Changed my mind. I'm coming with you. What are you waiting for?
for? We better hurry. I don't think I can let you go off again without me. Fair enough. I'm glad of the company. You only had to ask. Ask? I was waiting for you to ask me. I thought you'd want to keep an eye on the boy. Oh, while you were off cavorting with cowgirls in the next county? I don't think so, John Marston. You only just got home. That Jack has seen enough of me for a lifetime. So, is she married? This Bonnie McFarland? No. What does she look like? I don't know. Pretty normal, I suppose. Normal? What? Normal like me? No. Normal as in two eyes, mouth, nose, that kind of normal. Besides, ain't no woman fine as you. A little flattery. Now we're finally getting somewhere. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. Another pearl of wisdom from John Marston. I sure do miss those. I never took you for the jealous type, Abigail. I ain't jealous so much as curious. You heard what she wrote. It's just some corn. She saved my life, and she was decent enough to me, so I owe her this much at least. Come on. How did she save your life, anyway? She found me half dead on the side of the road and took me to the doctor. Most folks would have left me there. Half dead from what? Bill didn't take so kindly to me visiting unannounced. Bill never did like surprises. How was he? Same as he was when we left. Angry and dumb. Taking his revenge out on the world. People down there were really scared of him. Uh, Bill? You gotta be kidding me. He was only frightening if he was afraid of dumb fools. Bill weren't so bad, but when Dutch went crazy, Bill took it hard. For a while, we all thought we'd found something right. A better way to live, but it was just a lie. So you saw before they did. Maybe. But they was still kind of a family. A family that left you for dead. You knew the truth, John. And they hated you for it. Where did they take you? Who? Those government bastards. Where did they hold you and Jack? I ain't sure. They kept their eyes covered there and back. Can't have been too far from here, though. They treat you right? It ain't the first time I've had a gun to my head, John. You're forgetting your marriage proposal. Very fun. No, they learned pretty quick what would happen if they laid a finger on me. It wasn't them or being there. I didn't care about that. I've been in far worse situations. You came. Thank you so much. We lost the entire harvest. Miss McFarland, I'd like you to meet my wife, Abigail. Oh, ain't you quite the gentleman all of a sudden. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Marston. Likewise. Thank you for saving my husband's life. And for teaching the miserable old goat some manners, among other things. I didn't teach him anything. I know better than to try to change a man. You should meet my father. Oh, people can change, Miss McFarland. John and I have to believe that more than anybody. This is a decent first harvest for you, John. You should be proud. That's good land you got there. How are you feeling, Mrs. Marston? From what your husband told me, it must have been awful for you. I've been through worse, and I knew he'd be back before too long. He can't cook a meal to save his life. Abigail, in my darkest hours, when I was most homesick, just the thought of one of your rat meat stews kept me pushing forward. Well, about as amusing as a weep of saddle sore, ain't he, Mr. Farland? If you're gonna start yammering about women's work, John, I'd say you might be in the wrong company. I'd say so, too. I never felt so outnumbered. So that was the famous Bonnie. 
That was her, all right. She's pretty. She's normal, like I said. Well, you always wanted to be a rancher. I'd have thought she'd be just your thing. The perfect rancher's wife, if I ever saw one. I already got a rancher's wife. I'm only teasing. I like her, and I'm glad she saved your life. Most of the time, anyway. The McFarlands are good people. She did blush better than a shepherd's sunset when she saw you, though. I have that effect on women. You've clearly had one too many blows to the head. You ain't wrong about that, Mrs. Marshall. That's quite a ranch they got there. That'll be us someday. As soon as we get back on our feet. I don't know, John. How many times can we start again? An outlaw and a working girl. We ain't exactly farmers. We are now. Forget that life. It's over. Do you really believe that? We have to. It's the only way we'll ever have a future. The life we led, that doesn't go away. It's never over. You think those government men are just gonna leave us alone now? The old gang's dead. I did what they asked. And that's it? The life of pride forgiven? We're back together, ain't we? Until they decide you owe them something else. Sometimes I think I was the stupid one for believing I could get out. Maybe Dodge, Bill, and Javier were just being honest with themselves. You ain't perfect, John, and I sure ain't. But you're better than they are, than they were. Come on, John, let's keep moving. Maybe we can't change, but we gotta try for Jack's sake. Even if we have to start again a hundred times, it's better than going back to what we were. How's Jack doing? Angry, upset. He's been through a lot. I hope he's gonna be all right. It's gonna take time. For a while, his world was safe, normal even. Then it got turned upside down again. He ain't saying much about it. I've tried to talk to him, but how do you explain any of this? What do you say when he asks about Uncle Bill and Uncle Dutch? They were family when he was a little boy. He hides away in those books of his. Wouldn't you? It ain't like the real world's done him many favors. He's just been kidnapped. He grew up with the gang. That's no lie for a boy. We did our best to protect him. Come on, John. He saw things no boy should see. Well, now we got a chance to make it right. We did good today, John. I guess I better go fix us something to eat.
Howdy, Paul. What's the book, boy? Uh, nothing, sir. What's it about? Well, it's an adventure, sir. Um, set out in the West, and it tells this amazing story of how people killed the savage Redskins, and how this man, this brave man, hunts the man who killed his father. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Talking of adventure, how'd you like to learn to track elk? Really big ones in the valley this time of year. We could use the meat. Well, I... I know you'd rather read your adventures. Trust me, this can be very enjoyable in its own way. I suppose maybe it's a little less dramatic. <laughs> so, let's go, come on. You may get to see me get gored by some massive wild beast. Then you can write a story about that. Very funny, Paul. I've forgotten how funny you was. Grab your things. Stay close to the dog, son. Yeah. When he finds something, you stay back and I'll show you how to make a kill. Whatever you say, sir. You sure you're ready for this? I guess so. Now the trick to hunting is calm and patience. You gotta think and move like an animal to catch an animal. A rifle helps, doesn't it? Help don't stand still, son. I wouldn't know. This is the first time you've taken me hunting. There's lots of things I ain't done with you. But I'm gonna try and make up for that. Easy. You don't seem too excited about this. What do you want me to say, Paul? Yippee? Are you sure you're all right? I mean, I know all that business must have been hard on you. It wasn't nothing. I'm not a kid anymore. Well, it won't happen again. It's over. Until the next time, you mean? Look, we picked up a scent. Come on. There won't be a next time. Don't make no more promises, Paul. I've heard them all before. Let's go. You know, one time I hunted a bear up in tall trees. You never seen a bigger animal in all your life. I read this story about a girl who hunted by wolves. She'd hunt goats with them and everything. Sounds like a tall yarn to me. Taller than a boy being taken from his home and locked up in a dungeon? I'm just saying. Maybe you spend too much time with your head in those books. 
I thought you and Ma wanted me to read. <laughs> we do. So long as you're not, well, hiding from the real world. Look, I see one. Yeah, I see it. This one's mine. Stay with me, son. Slow down. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I'll show you how to cut the meat. I thought it was going to get away. That was great, huh? You just gotta wait for the right shot, not rush it. Woo! That's a big one. This meat should fetch a decent price in Manzanita. Hope you were watching. It'll be your turn next. All right, let's see if we can find some more. What are you doing? Let's keep moving. You can do it, Rufus. You ready to take a shot, Jack? Of course, Paul. Remember, it's all about timing. Wait for your moment. Don't snatch it. I know, at I know. Me. I saw how you did it. If you say so. All right. When he finds him, you take the lead. Whoa there. Stay on him, boy. What do you Slow. found, Rufus? Go get him, boy! Good boy! Go on, Rufus! Go find him, Rufus! Easy. There they are! Jack, come on! Steady now. That's it! Lie down! Get here! Jack, now it's your turn. Hey, watch it! Nice work, son. You're a quick learner. Now come on. Let's get this meat over to the trading post at Manzanita. There you go. Yeah. Did you see me? You did good, son. Can't we shoot some more? Only yeah. kill what you need. We'll go out again soon. You know, I didn't think I was gonna I... like it. I told you you'd have fun, didn't I? Yeah. Come on. Here we are. Jack, you wait here. I'll be just a moment. Hello there, Mr. Marson, sir. Hello there. Next year, the trains will be running even faster. Mark my... Hi there. What do you have? And there we are. Enjoy the journey. Los traidores. Options to suit any pot. Hola, Senor Marston. Thank you. Yeah, 
You're all set. Hello there. Los malos son apáticos con respeto a los pobres. I hope you enjoy a smooth ride. <laughs> Why do I feel like I just got robbed? Don't be a stranger. Let me know if you need any help. Howdy. Nice to see you. Welcome. Hello there. Oh, he's in the market. Well, that's all I got for you this time. See you again, I hope. All done. Let's head home. Never you mind. Enough to keep Rufus out of the stewing pot for a couple days. Oh, Paul, that was so much fun. I can't really believe it. Just like in the books. We'll do it again soon. Now get to your chores.